so don't just look at my nails oh my god so i've got matte nails done this look at this side this is how it's supposed to this nails are supposed to look like this uh, but i ate dal today and yesterday and i'm trying to remove it with an acetone free remover but because i got them matte i think they're not coming off usually for glossy they do come off and look at my it looks like i have yellow nails but hello hi you guys welcome back to my channel if you know my channel i'm akanksha so in this video you must have read the title already we are going to talk about a few makeup basics or makeup mistakes people often uh, do i kind of noted these points down looking at my friends and family like whenever they do makeup i look at them and then they do these mistakes or they like, could avoid these things to get a better like makeup look and i'm like how do they how do they not know this is kind of like basic makeup has been around so many so many people have taught these basics also but then i'm like not everybody does makeup as much as i do so it might not be a basic or a common uh, point to know so i thought i'll touch base on such kind of mistakes which can get you a most like really nice beautiful look but you just you know probably are unaware or you're probably lazy or i don't know why you don't do it but um, yeah let's get into the video and talk about a uh, few points i have five to six points i want to touch on so let's get started okay uh now the first point or like basically before i get into the points and you you look at the points and like account like these are too basic like come on everybody knows them at this point but trust me like there are few people who don't know and this is the video for them if, if you know these already then you are a pro as well so do like spare with me i don't know what else to say so the first point is less is more you guys now when i say less is more i'm not talking in terms of full glam extreme glam that is again comes to a personal preference a personal choice so you don't have you can do whatever you want but when i say less is more i mean in terms of product now i know people try to achieve this full coverage or they want to cover cover all the pigmentation the acne scars etc etc but they'll be just using um uh, sure to medium coverage foundation or a skin tint and shit like that and then they apply so many so many layers of it to cover that exact like you know if there's a spot they really want to cover they add so many layers of it that at the end like the purpose of a skin tint is for you to get like a natural uh, skin look while kind of blurring out the skin pigmentation like it does not erase it that's the whole point of a skin tint or a sheer coverage foundation but if you want something which is completely like full glam you want that extremely glam look or you have a lot of pigmentation you want to cover there's certain blemishes you want to cover i have a video right here you can definitely check it out of how to get like cover i had bad acne phase and i did that so i have a video on that but other than that if you do want like a full glam phase where everything looks really nice and flawless then definitely go for a medium to full coverage foundation where you use little bit of product but get more coverage so i hope you get my point like using a lot of product even if it's a skin tint might give you a heavy cakey look layering products on and on and on and on it just does not give you a beautiful look it just gets too clumpy too cakey so less is more in this way that if you want something full coverage then take a full coverage add a little bit of product and get it covered rather than using a sure one adding 100 layers and it's still not uh being covered so that is my first point okay next one and this is i think the most most like disappointing factor for me when i see people do this even now after like makeup has become such a huge thing and like you know people do use it on an every day but i know a lot of people who do like they do makeup every single day they're completely into makeup but they still don't wet their sponges guys like i don't know what else to say to you like if you use your sponge dry then it just not it, it's just not going to give you the finish it's supposed to give always always damp your sponge when i mean by damp take your sponge run it under water let it completely get soaked your some sponges increase in size as well so once it's done like squeeze out all the water if you have a cloth then just like you know wrap the um sponge in that cloth so that excess water is gone only the damp soft sponge is there whenever you uh, you know damp your sponge they also get very soft they also get very tender easy to use uh, but versus a dry sponge it's it it just like you know sponges let's talk general science they are there to soak up things like you know 
and not just makeup sponge wash cloth wash sponge or whatever it is but the minute you put water it kind of soaks everything in right so like here all the soaking is done by water now when you go in with foundation it does not absorb a lot of it versus when you put a foundation on dry sponge it, it tends to absorb a lot of product also does not give a good blend to your skin especially if you do not hydrate your skin is going to make it more dry more dehydrated the product is not going to move around properly so always 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 use a uh, um, you know wet sponge never ever go for a dry sponge if you're lazy like me and i these days one of the main reasons I switched into uh, brushes is also because I was like, <laughs> when I sit down, I'm like, oh my god, I forgot to wet my sponge. That's the reason I shifted to brushes because brushes are something you can use dry as well. Keep it on your vanity. If they're ready to use, just pick it up. Da da da, you're done. One of my most favorite uh, foundation brushes, Lufa Beauty RB23. Really nice. So if you don't, if you're lazy enough to go like wet this, then definitely go for a, a brush. But if you're going to use a sponge, then definitely wet it and use it. Do not use it dry. The next one and the third one is don't make your brows look like um Charlie Chaplin like I don't know what example to you don't make them look like caterpillars they're supposed to look like a feather you guys I know it comes with practice I know you eventually might get there but this is a mistake a lot of people do especially in picking the shade uh, the easiest way I would give you uh, for you to like pick a brow shade is whatever your hair color is like you know sometimes you might mu you must have been like an extreme black you know hair girl but then later you've like dyed your hair colored your hair and now you're into brown so it's really really important for you to shift the sh your brow color as well because now a black pencil or a dark gray pencil would be too dark for your brown hair so always always pick and choose your brow color like a shade lighter than your original hair color this way it just like won't dominate your entire face brow is supposed to structure like you know uh, shape your face it's not supposed to make you look like I don't know what else. It's just like I don't know what else to put. You sometimes when you have OCD about something, it just irritates you so much, right? When you see it like that, like it's just block brows and you don't want it. That's how I feel like that. Try to like you know. Let's say give, let me take my elf one is there it's more rounded more thick so like for this one what people generally do is they just go ahead and like you know draw like this and fill their brows like this this just like makes it too clumpy too fat just go in and add tiny 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 strokes do you see that difference so one stroke at a time is just like you're building your own brow without it looking too lumpy so the next one and the fourth one is skin prep this is like the most basic thing when it comes to makeup you guys like if you want your makeup to be right you have to get your skin prep right know your skin type know what works for you if you are an oily skin type then probably just go in uh, with like a gel primer or a set like uh, primer water if you're oily if you're from dry skin then probably like a you know facial oil or an illuminating primer or something very much hydrating for dry skin because makeup is made like you know usually the most of the makeup in the market especially if it comes to oily skin normal skin it, the mark like the product is made to last for like eight hours ten hours you're supposed to powder your face because you don't want it to get oily so all these things kind of dry down your skin okay and like they kind of have these uh, Marifying formulas, vagera, vagera, and ex and imagine you putting that on an extremely bare, normal, dry skin. It it's just going to cling on to it. It's not going to blend properly. And over the time, like one hour, two hours later, I don't know if it happens to you, but it happens to me. If I do not prep my skin correctly, like one hour into makeup, my skin starts feeling so dry, especially because I've used like a lot of powder, etc. So make sure you prep your skin uh, right. Like I'll put a clip of fear like i don't start doing makeup unless my skin looks like that where it's ready nice and juicy that when i put foundation on my skin it is ready to properly mingle and blend it into rather than if it's too dry i put it in one place and it's just not going to blend enough it's going to cling on to my dry skin or my acne or my hair and i do not want that so choose your skin type illuminating oil or like facial oil if you're oily skin then go with primer water gel primer hydration is the key is the key before applying any makeup so make sure you do that okay the next one and this one probably like i don't want to sound mean or like i it's, it's not mean i think it's just like some things you have like these pet peeves right and this is like one of my huge pet peeves is dry lips 
oh my god you guys see having matte lip versus dry lip is very different i'll put pictures here on the screen about how a matte lip can look versus how a dry lip will look so before starting your makeup like if you have extremely dry lips please please apply a lip mask a lip balm a lip oil whatever it is having dry lips on a beautifully done makeup base is literally like um what do you say you like you know i want to give like a nice example give me a minute It's like you eating uh, momos without mayo or like having pav bhaji without pav I don't know it's I have this point in this list because like even if you don't know anything your face for your face no foundation no concealer nothing nothing but just a mascara and lipstick can make a huge difference in your everyday uh, routine and but if you have like dry flaky uh, lips and on top of it if you're using like a matte liquid lipstick or a matte lip it just is not like a good thing to look at your lips are also asking and dying for help they need that nourishment they need uh you know like care but if you apply especially liquid lipstick or a drying formula on already dry lips your lips are just screaming for help so like you know for me at this point my lips are trying to dry as well because of the season change etc so what i did before applying makeup is applied like a nice thick layer of lip balm until i completed my entire base so it takes me half an hour and then once i'm done with my base i wiped off the lip balm then i applied like a bullet so this is the reason i prefer bullet lipstick a lot as well so today i've applied the plum lipsticks see they are like matte formula but they're comfortable on the lips they don't dry your lips uh, down and on top of that i added gloss to make it like more nice and juicy now i know glossy lip is not like a preference for everybody so you do you but don't like apply a cracking liquid lipstick they're good liquid lipstick they're bad liquid lipsticks in a matte formula as well so pick and choose and hydrate that lips one of the, uh, a really nice lip mask i would suggest is the earth rhythm lip mask i really like this one if you have extremely dry lips um then just put this on your lips every night or like right before your makeup it will be nice i really like the organic harvest shea butter lip balm as well i like the then the next one and i think this step is the most underrated step among like the entire makeup routine which is setting spray you guys i cannot begin to emphasize how important a setting spray is if you want your makeup to first of all look flawless and mainly last a really long time you might feel like it's not doing much but you know if you want to know like get a nice cooling gooding get a nice get a nice setting spray apply it on one side then apply nothing on the side and you will see the difference so 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 evidently especially for somebody who sweats a lot or you know like you know touches something like everything like there's so many things a setting spray can prevent and makes your makeup last for so 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 long if you're like you know my makeup still lasts a really long time setting spray just i feel um melts all the makeup together it's like kind of the last step for a reason the powders you have applied the creams you've applied like everything just melts into the skin and becomes like a, this beautiful concussion uh and i think i cannot really like i feel so incomplete without doing a setting spray i feel like my makeup is so cakey without doing a setting spray so yeah setting spray very very important few few, few affordable ones i really like is the next one the wet and wild one the elf one and when it comes to high end i really like the two faced one the mac prep plus prime two faced for mattifying urban urban decay for mattifying matlab they make like completely last for a long time mac prep and prime for like normal skin because it kind of make gives you a little dewy effect as uh, well so yeah guys that's about it those were the five six points i wanted to touch on let me know what points you knew what you didn't do what did you is, is there like any mistakes you've commented i mean if you watch me like if you follow my videos and i think i taught you enough so that you kind of know these points already uh but if you didn't then you know welcome to my channel we learn a lot here i hope at least i teach you uh, good stuff and yeah that's about it for this uh, uh, video i hope it was useful and 
So this video shout out goes to Monica Kondapalli. Thank you, Monica, for always loving and supporting. It absolutely means the world to me. You have no idea. If you want to be part of the next video shout out, then all you have to do is comment below and use the hashtag AKS, and you can be a part. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Meanwhile, like, share, and subscribe if you like what I, you know, do here. I will see you in my next video. Bye.